folks, we have come so far. We have come so far and the people of Alabama have, have spoken. We've tried to make sure that this campaign was about finding common ground and reaching across and actually getting things done for the people. That is Democrat Doug Jones. He's the man behind a major upset in Alabama tonight, beating Republican Roy Moore in the race for a U.S. Senate seat. Alabama is a deep South, deep Republican red state. For 25 years, no Democrat has won a Senate seat here until tonight. Moore, a champion of family values, but accused of sexual misconduct with teen girls, has lost the race. And this is an upset sure to change the political landscape of Trump's America. But... Realize when the vote is this close that it's not over. And we still got to go by the rules about this recount provision. And the Secretary of State has explained it to us. And we're expecting that the press will go up there and talk to them to find out what the situation is. But we also know that God is always in control. Amen. You know, part of the thing... Ever so tight uh, of a margin, one and a half percent, incredibly close. Uh, right now, Jones sitting at 49.9 percent, more at 48.4. That's not close enough for an automatic recount required by law. Uh, now, there are about 22,000 write-in ballots which have not been checked, but a big share of those would have to go Moore's way to trigger that recount. And could the final result truly change? Well, that's a scenario the Alabama Secretary of State described tonight as unlikely. Tonight's result, uh, no doubt a shock to the Roy Moore team. Keith Bogue is at his campaign headquarters, joins us now with more. So, Keith, walk us through it, huh? Well, I think there are some basic things to take out of this. First of all, it looks as though uh, the Democrat ca Democratic candidate, Doug Jones, did better than expected in key uh, districts and key precincts. Uh, he had a stronger turnout than expected in African-American voters. And Roy Moore, the Republican candidate, underperformed in some of the precincts that he really needed uh, to win this. But I think when you look at the results, one of the important things is going to be the number of write-in write votes for other candidates they were. And I think it's reasonable to extrapolate from that. The people who are writing in the name of another candidate were doing it because they could not vote for Roy Moore and they could not vote for a Democrat. If you total up all of those votes, the percentages as they look now, if that had not happened, Roy Moore would be the senator tonight. So I think you can extrapolate from that that it really was the allegations of child molestation and sexual assault made by women against him that caused him this election. We're already seeing uh, fingers of blame being pointed uh, at Steve Bannon, the Republican establishment in Washington as represented by the Senate leadership fund has already issued a statement saying uh, Bannon cost us this seat uh, the choice of candidate does matter, and he, he was foolish enough to bring Donald Trump into this whole fiasco as well. We're going to hear a lot more about that, Andrew. Right, and so, so Keith, I mean, you talk about these razor-thin margins in a state that is accustomed to lopsided victories. So tell me, I mean, what are the lessons in all of this for Democrats and Republicans? Well, I think Democrats have to figure out what worked here because, I mean, they will be just stunned by this result. And what it does for them is that, that the math now makes it possible that in the 2018 midterm elections, they could actually take control back of the Senate. So they need to figure out what worked here. And of course, Republicans, the lessons for them, I think some of them are quite obvious. The Senate Leadership Fund is probably correct that the choice of candidate does matter. And in the war that they are having between the party establishment and the Steve Bannon Breitbart wing of the party, choice of candidate is gonna be an ongoing battle through the midterms election, midterm elections. And what the party establishment is represented by Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan uh, get out of tonight is a very powerful argument that if the Bannon wing of the party is allowed to choose our candidates for uh, our party, then they're gonna choose people who lose. Keith Bogue, joining us from Montgomery, Alabama. Thanks very much. Now, just a year ago, Alabama voted for Donald Trump overwhelmingly. A lot has happened since then. So who is this new Democrat they voted into the Senate? We're applying for a job, and your resume is a part of that experience. 
Chief in Doug Jones's resume is his time as U.S. attorney, his most famous case convicting two white supremacists behind a church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama, 40 years after the fact. Justice delayed does not have to be justice denied. He's known as being pretty conservative for a Democrat, but in conservative Alabama, that makes him pretty liberal. Now, one more note on this story. Just in the last hour, we did hear from the U.S. president. In the final leg of the campaign, Donald Trump, you may remember, came out and endorsed Roy Moore. Well, tonight, he tweeted, quite graciously, congratulations to Doug Jones on a hard-fought victory. The write-in votes played a very big factor, but a win is a win. The people of Alabama are great, and the Republicans will have another shot at this seat in a very short period of time. It never ends.